Greetings everyone, this is Norn Expert here back again with another video. Today we are solving problem number 22 and the difficulty it's been rated at is medium. Uh, this problem was asked by Microsoft. Um, again, don't get scared with this. Uh, and let's just dive into the problem description. So given a dictionary of words and a string made up of those words, no spaces, uh, return the original sentence in a list. If there is more than one possible reconstruction, return any of them. If there is no possible reconstruction, then return null, um, and so on and so forth. So, for example, given the set of words, quick brown the fox, and the string, the quick brown fox, you should return uh, an array represented with all the words as the quick brown and fox, right? Same thing over here. Um, so you can actually sort of identify this problem and this is more like a dynamic programming problem. Uh, again, don't get scared whenever you hear that's a DP problem. DP problems are mostly really, really easy if you know uh, your basics. And, and the way we'll be sort of progressing with this is that um, we need to return either of the values. We basically have to return a list representation. Um, and that's actually pretty easy to do. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any such online editor which had a similar sort of a question where the return type is either this or that. Uh, fortunately though, I was able to find a lead code problem where the expectation is all computations, what you have over here. So if you have uh, these words over here and the string is given as this, then basically you need to return uh, these two values as a list. I, I hope that makes sense. Uh, and yeah, so again, today we'll be coding a lead code. The problem it's been given as is hard. If you don't know what this problem is, it's a word break problem and it's a pretty normal problem. And I've seen it in a lot of interviews. Um, and the way we'll be going with this is, and you can also pause this video and go to the link given in the description below to understand what the problem statement is and look at the inputs and everything else. Um, but the way I'll sort of progress with this is by making a utility function and the utility function will keep on getting recursively called over and over again. Um, and the approach is going to be pretty simple. All I'm going to do is I'm going to, inside my recursive loop, uh, recursive calls, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a for loop. And the for loop is going to run on all the words which are there. Right? And I'm going to go through all the words one by one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to look for the starting value of each of those things. Uh, okay, we'll note this down, but let's start with our base condition. So we'll start with if not s, then you want to probably return an empty list, right? Um, and let's make a quick helper function. Let's call it helper. And this helper function is basically like a utility function. Let's go except a few things, for example, it's going to take the word dict and so on and so forth. Um, we're going to optimize the solution. First, we'll get into the of the problem. Um, and, and yeah, and we'll be going from there. So let's just do a return of the helper. Sorry, the dot helper and s and the word dict. Again, you don't really need to use a helper function, but it sort of helps me understand a few things a little better. So our rules, which we are going to state, are that we are going to iterate through all the values in the in the word dict. Obviously, iterate through all words, and while we're doing the iterations, we are going to check for uh, whether a particular word that we have encountered uh, is the same as the value in S, or is at least S is starting with that value. So if S starts with um, the word that we've iterated on. Uh, and this helper function is going to have a return type of, if you didn't understand what the return type is, is return type is going to be of a list, right? Cool. So these are the rules, uh, let's get down to it. So basically, if we don't have anything in S, we're going to return, right? And what we'll be doing is basically whenever we call the helper function, we'll be manipulating the string, right? And we'll be cutting that string out. So if you have cats and dog over here, uh, where we know that cat actually matches, so we'll pick this part up, splice it out, and then pass in 
S A N D O G to our helper function to try to understand whether it can formulate something from there. And then it's just it's just gonna go on from there, right? So very simple. So let's make a resultant set first, or resultant list rather. And now we will iterate through all the values inside our word dict, right? And all I have to say is if s and there's a property called starts with in Python, so we'll be using that. Um, you know, you can do splicing as well if you want to, but you can use this as well. So if and only if s starts with w, right? Do we do some formulations? So the first formulation is is that we make sure that you know what happens if we have a perfect match. That is, what happens if the s value, which is there, is that exactly equal to the value which is the word value? Um, and the way to check that is basically if length of s is equal to length of w, right? All we have to do in that condition is append that value or append that word inside our resultant list. Else, if that is not the case, um, what we have to do is the same thing which I talked about. We have to splice out those values which are redundant. So the way we'll be doing it is basically, okay, before I go on with that, let's look at this guy over here. Um, so I'll just put a comment over here. Right, and this is the value which is passed in. Now, this will encounter cats and cat, but let's look at cats first. So when it has cats, what we need to do is we need to pass all these values, right? And as we are passing all these values, we need to also make sure that the value which is going to be returned by the resultant set is also mapped out, right? So if you didn't understand what's happening there, I'll explain it to you again. So let's just call our helper function recursively and we'll do self helper s um, length of w. This is basically splicing it out to those things which are just required. So if you have cats, this thing will get spliced out and and dog will be the only substring which will be passed. Um, so we'll do self dot helper um, s length and just pass in everything else. So you pass in word dict. Um, and if if you remember me mentioning, we were returning our resultant list at the end. So the same thing would be happening here, and we actually need that list as well. So we'll be doing, we'll be sort of using that value inside some variable that's called ANS. And for each of the elements inside ANS, uh, what you're going to do is we're just going to append that particular element with our word and then move forward from there. Because as you can see here, we don't need a list representation of all the values. We can have a list of lists, but it's basically a list of strings. So let's try to go with that. And this guy is going to return a list, right? So it might return and or dog. Uh, and the way we're going to use it is basically by telling this guy that we need to only append it in this way. So this is just some formatting happening over here. Again, um, you can pause the video and try to do it yourself. It's pretty simple. Um, and basically what's gonna happen is, let's take our example where we had cats and dogs, right? So first thing which is gonna happen is cats is gonna get matched, right? So cats is gonna get matched and and dog is the string which is going to go uh, to our helper function. Then and is going to get matched and dog is going to go to our helper function. And when dog is going to go, um, it's going to return, it's going to basically do this and return the uh, result. At that particular moment of time, it's going to get popped out to that value when and dog was there. And when and dog was there, all you're doing is you've just got this ANS value, which is basically a list representation of a string, which is dog. And for each of the elements inside that, you're just saying that, hey, I just want and space dog, which will happen here. Um, then and dog uh, will get returned and they'll go to the cats uh, stack and then it'll just move forward from there, right? Um, again, if you didn't understand what's happening, um, I'll put a few print conditions. It's a little difficult to try it. And, um, but overall, this problem is pretty easy. Uh, let's just do print, uh, oops, I apologize. So we'll do print w. Or rather, let's actually put a print here. So print 
let's do found right let's put the answer let's put what word did it match on and what was the string at that point of time right cool let's just run this code let's see what's the expected output <coughs> Right, so as you can see here, found is running fine. And the way the iteration is going is that first thing which happened is that, as you can see here, you have S, um, which was placed out, and you have S hand dog, and sand was actually a variable, which was found. So that thing also matched, and that thing matched to dog, right? So next thing which happened was that you had cat, sign dog and sign dog got displaced again and basically the same thing those iterations keep on happening over and over again so you have cat sign and dog and same thing for cats and dog cool and then the output is the same as the expected output which is awesome and let's just remove these prints and let's just try submitting it uh, so this is also a simple recursive way of sort of handling this thing right uh, there are multiple ways of Whoops. All right, cool, awesome. So I was hoping that this would happen. This has not happened to me before. Um, this is just showing a time limit exceeded. Uh, and whenever time limit exceeded error sort of comes to you, whenever there's an online editor, what you need to do is you need to optimize the solution as much as you can, right? So the way we'll be optimizing it today is by a simple technique called memoization. And memoization is pretty simple. It's basically that if you've encountered a particular uh, set of variables before, and you already know what the return is, we don't need to do all the computations again. And the way we'll be doing that is by storing a value, a parameter called memo. And memo is just basically a global representation of all values that we've encountered so far. We've encountered a string or S, right? So if S has already been encountered before, we don't need to really compute it. So we'll just say, hey, if S is in memo, then basically return memo s and this will return it at the way whenever it finds it right then over here we need to before we return the res all we have to do is we just have to say if the memo sorry the memo value of s needs to be equal to res right so that way you'll have something inside the memo and also since we're calling it here we just need to pass it in that variable over here as well Let's run this one more time. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it should run. And basically you've done memoization without even doing anything. And you can see it's faster than at least half of the online submissions. Um, and the memory usage is 67% less, which is, which is all, those, all those things are fine, right? Um, again, so it's a pretty simple problem. If you didn't understand what's happening, you can sort of rewind to the video, but we've just used a very simple approach. We have used recursion and inside the recursive cause, we just put a for loop. And whatever value that we were calling inside the for loop, whenever we're calling the recursive call, uh, through those for loops, we're just using the return value and we're just using it in a different way. Um, cool, so that's it for today's video. Um, obviously this problem is much different than the problem because of the return type and how different it is. Um, and you can Google on how to do a word break problem, it's usually, a boolean return type most of the times um but then again in this particular problem we need a list of strings and we've sort of made that and that's it cool so thank you again for watching this video if you did like this video do give a like and do subscribe to our channel we are discussion over here and we'd love to have you on board with us uh, we're pushing videos on the daily and it would really be awesome if you could join us Again, if you didn't understand something, do leave it in the comments below so that we can discuss it even further. Um, and obviously you should try this problem on your own because I believe that this problem has like a DFS sort of an approach um, and it's sort of used in a lot of other places as well. So if you perfect this, you can perfect a lot of other questions as well. Uh, and that's it. So thank you so much. If you've already subscribed, you're awesome. We all know it and have a great day.